Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Hello and welcome to Cloud Forest Vibes. So I'm sorry I haven't had too much time to post the last few days, uh, about a week or so. Uh, you guys kind of got inundated on the Thanksgiving week with a bunch of videos because I had extra time. So I have not had that time after Thanksgiving, unfortunately. Um, after the break is a very busy time in my profession and I am just trying to tread water right now. So I have a relatively quick video for you guys today. I'm going to kind of go in depth a little bit on some stuff, but I'm going to do a general update video for you guys on pretty much everything. I'm going to actually start with the tank. I always end with it, but um, today we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with it and we're going to end in here because I have some really cool up and coming stuff to show you guys. I have some new blooms to show you guys and uh, just a lot to talk about. So we're going to do a quick stop in the tank take a quick peek, look at some stuff, and then we're going to end up in this bad boy and we're going to spend some time looking at some things that um, everybody seems to want to look at and I want to show you guys. So that's that. Um, thanks for joining as always. I appreciate you guys. My subscriber numbers have jumped considerably since the GV BFOS 2020 event and I do appreciate all of you guys, all the new subscribers, all the old ones. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for helping me grow this channel. I really do appreciate you all, and I do look forward to what is to come. I have big, big plans, so it's going to take time, but um, yeah, I've got a lot, a lot planned for you guys for the future. So one of my newest projects that I have planned that is going to be up and coming is coming home this week or next week latest so i've got a big update for the channel something that we're going to be working on and looking forward to and a whole lot of other awesome stuff so without further ado i'll get to it we're going to get the camera off the tripod and look at the tank first and then we're going to double back and take a look at a whole bunch of stuff in here so here we go we're here we're in the tank um lots of progress lots of stuff that's actually still going on and things that I've missed so we're gonna go ahead and start here at the top I have my Condilago Rodrigo Y this thing is still going strong it's got two blooms open right now and a third spike that has actually come out and surprised us so I think we're gonna be back to three blooms at a time here on this plant very soon and I look forward to it it's really really neat I'm not gonna get in close to it we just did a video on this guy if you want to see more on Condilago Rodrigo I, please go back, check out the video. Um, it's orchid flowers that move, or something close to that. This, this plant has a really cool reflex action in the flower. The lip snaps shut like a porglossum. Um, check that video out. You'll really like this plant if you've never heard of it. So, Condilago Rodrigo I. We have our... Dendrobium Cuthbertsonii red here and it is doing really well. It's an awesome plant. It's got the single bloom on it right now, which we've looked at many times, but it's got not one, but two back here buds coming and they are progressing really nicely. I don't know if you can see that or not, but just under this flower you see one and two buds. Everything in here is dew watering. It looks dry because it is. Right after I'm done with this, I'm going to get to my watering. But the other Dendrobium Cuthbertsonii type that we have, hello Sheba, <laughs> is over here. It's still flooded out with blooms. Some of the blooms are actually starting to fade now, but that's okay. This is a hybrid. The important thing is that our Cuthbertsonii red is still going strong with more buds coming so this thing is going to be in flower hopefully for quite some time and that is awesome so the Lepanthes telepagonaflora has a few flowers open unfortunately I missed it on video in all of its glory a few days ago it had five blooms open so 
I did get a really awesome picture. I bought a new phone, finally I upgraded my iPhone to a newer one and I have an awesome camera now so I did get really 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 awesome pictures of this plant which I will throw up one or two of right now. This is Lepanthes telepaganiflora, and even though we missed it on video, I think the pictures that I just put up do it a lot of justice. So, coming down just a bit, we're going to look at the Lepanthes uxoria today. It's got several blooms out, and something really special right now is this, because this is the first leaf, oh goodness, this is the first leaf to put out two blooms. So hopefully you can see that. Let me get in here a little closer. But yeah, that's the first leaf that has put out dual blooms. So we are getting double blooms on the Euxoria now, as well as regular single blooms on all the other growths. Um, coming over just a bit, this is our Lepanthes domenguensis. It's in bloom again. The uh, Mariposa to its right, again, always in bloom. Helicocephala here always always in bloom but what we do have that's special is this guy now again I was lazy I didn't shoot quite enough video last week and I missed the triple blooms open on video but I do have a relatively awesome picture of it and we have another bloom in the back here that is getting ready to open up any day now and join its fellow two up here so we'll have three blooms open again soon but this is Lepanthes guatemalensis, and it has really been showing off quite a bit. Here you go. Now, relatively sad news that I have is that our Dracula Lotax has finished not only one, but two of its blooms. They did not last very long maybe a week, week and a half, but they finish pretty quickly. The good news is we have another bud. So we're going to get one more flower. I missed both of these blooms together on video, but again, I got a really, really, really awesome couple pictures that I will throw up right now so you guys can see exactly what this awesome little flower looks like. Really, really a blessing. So something pretty neat, this is our Mastavelia Garcia, and we, uh, we mounted this one, we put it in the tank, I have another division that is in the tent in a pot. And what I noticed was some new growth activity, and I think you can see it here. This little guy just at the end of my fingertip, and there's another one behind it, if you can see that. But I thought they might be roots, I thought they might be new leaves or something. But to my surprise and to my delight, it appears that this thing is actually trying to bloom. So we have a few bloom spikes, it looks like two right now on the Mazdeve Garcia in the tank. I am going to let it go, I'm going to let it see what it wants to do. It has produced some nice roots in here and it seems pretty happy so we are going to have mouse to blooms hopefully in the near future so we are starting to get smoked out a little bit here by the fogger but one thing i do want to talk about before we leave is this plant here this is mouse exquisita yes it's very dry i need to get that watered everything in here needs to be watered so <laughs> before i hear it in the comments yes everything is extremely dry today is my watering day um, anyhow, this plant was living in the, in the tent, actually, since I've gotten it from Andy's, but it has not been doing very good, so I decided I was going to move it into the tank, 
and since then I don't know if you can see this or not but it's got lots and lots of new growth and the new growth that it had that were all curly cued and funny looking like this one have starting to straighten out open up and I think this is a much happier plant it's gonna stay in here for the indefinite future and we're just gonna see if we can nurse this thing back to health I do not see any root growth I've lost at least three or four new growths on it since it's been in the tank I'm sorry since it's been in the tent and that's why I decided to move it over here so it's living directly under the Mastivelia patriciana that is doing really well that I am somehow nursing back to health let's get up here get a better look at it this thing dropped all but two leaves everything that you see except for this leaf here and this leaf here so it dropped all of its leaves I thought for sure it was a goner but it has put up lots and lots and lots of new growth it seems to me like it's trying to start a new root system and I decided that the Exquisita was going to get the same treatment before it became in the same shape so lots and lots of success there and lots of happiness on my end because I have so many struggles I have so much trouble growing massive alien Dracula types it's really nice to finally be able to recover a few and actually have a new one that might bloom so that's my tank update let's get on over here to the tent and let's see what's going on before we get completely clouded out so we're back here in the tent and the first thing I'm going to talk about is my Spanish moss a few of you have asked for updates on this to see how it's doing and this is how it's doing let me get a little bit closer so far it's doing really really well it is growing it had a little initial period of dieback but it's growing 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 and mind you this actually was a bit lower I did cut quite a bit of this off I used it for various mounts and things and this has all been pretty much grow back so anything that you see dangling below about this level is for sure new growth and the amount of new growth that we've had up here is actually phenomenal so a lot of people were concerned because I used a wire clothes hanger to support this and mount this and everyone says that you put this on metal it dies it's it's terrible for it whatever I agree a hundred percent you guys are all right but I did use a coated metal this is coated it's not straight metal this is a you know paint or enamel whatever kind of coating it is so none of this moss is actually hanging directly on metal itself having that said I do want to do something better I want to come up with a better system this works good it's easy to hang and unhang and everything it, it does just fine but it is kind of a pain in the ass at the same time excuse my language um, it's here or it's in the middle you know this way I don't have much flexibility with it it's one giant clump I think it's starting to shade out certain plants that need more light and I do not have that big of a grow space I think from side to side I have about six feet from the floor all the way to the peak of the roof I have about six foot five this is a uh, kind of a conundrum a lot of things I've gotten <laughs> um, to my to my joy and also to my dismay have grown so much and they're getting kind of big so my little grow space is turning into a very little grow space <laughs> but um this is one of the issues I think I'm gonna have a solution for this soon I'm gonna divide it I'm gonna spread it out a little bit better and we're gonna still have the awesomeness of having Spanish moss because it's beautiful and it really is awesome it helps you absorb humidity and it also helps you disperse humidity depending on whether you have it wet or whether you have it dry and um, it's just a neat plant so that's my Talansia eusineoides or my Spanish moss let's look at some orchids what is this do you say oh geez that is 3% hydrogen peroxide and that is my Lepanthes dodsonii 
Yes, my Lepanthes Dodsonii. It's dropping leaves in a very strange manner, and there is definitely a pest involved. I don't know how else to put it. Things are chewed on. The stems halfway up are being cut, and it, uh, it's just being devastated. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I just walked in the tent to show you guys things, and this is the first thing I saw. So this is the first thing I'm dealing with. I think it might be a snail or a slug. I found a snail on a plant about oh geez about a week ago and uh... yeah i may have an issue i think i might have brought something in so we'll keep a close eye on this i am treating this right now they are being boiled alive whatever is in here <laughs> and hopefully we figure it out um, but yeah that is not doing so hot anyhow the uh... the rest of the plants over here I think are doing okay but now I have a bigger problem to deal with clearly so we're gonna take a close look at a few things but yeah that's the first thing I noticed so I may have an issue we're gonna probably do a follow-up video on so here we go let's talk about something good so this is my Angracum pseudophilicornu that I got from Tarzan not too long ago I don't know if you remember or not, but in one of my previous videos, I showed you guys that the crown, that the head leaf on this plant had actually rotted and I had to pick it out and I had to put cinnamon in the crown of this plant to try to seal the wound and save this plant. Well, we finally have some activity. We have roots coming on here and here. There's uh, another one somewhere. There was at least, maybe maybe here yeah, here one two three new roots and much to my surprise I've never seen this before in my life if you see here this is where we put the cinnamon on the crown this here is a new leaf I swear to you I plucked the entire leaf straight out of the crown of this plant I stuffed it with cinnamon I dosed it with cow mag and kelp and I don't know if it's growing a clone, I don't know if it's going to start producing roots from this point or not, but from the crown of this plant, we have growth. So strange. But it appears that I have saved this plant, so I'm extremely excited about it. That's our Angracum pseudophilicornu, and it is growing. So. I think we can call it saved. We're going to have to monitor it, but I am so surprised. More good news. This is our Ionopsis utricularioides that we got recently from Hauserman. And this spike is starting to go nuts. It's starting to branch and do all kinds of things. I am thrilled. I really, really want to see these flowers in my grow room. So that's good news. All of my Hauserman plants that are still on these cedar planks this one I've got the Neobathia here I've got this here um, I think that's it they are all coming off ASAP ASAP I have one thou oh here here the Phalaenopsis there's our other one there are pests um, I don't know what they are it's a beetle um, of some sorts that might be what's wreaking havoc on my Lepanthes and uh, hopefully not everything else in here so we're getting ready to do some bug genocide and I can't say much more um, my Hauserman plants are awesome I am thrilled with the plants themselves but beware because I brought in some pretty nasty pests I did not have any of these problems before these few plants showed up so I've seen the beetles I've seen little larva wormy looking things on them I've hit them with Fizen I've hit them with all kinds of different stuff and so far they're pretty resilient to everything um, drastic times are coming so that's my only warning but I do have good news nonetheless as long as these don't get eaten by whatever the hell I brought in here so <laughs> anyhow Moving on. So this is our Falparitii. This is our latest new growth. We've looked at this a few times. 
and I've been growing this a bit dry. It's been getting cool, and um, I have great news. If you look down there, we've definitely got new root growth, and I see two things that look like they could be spikes. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that, but this plant is progressing, and that's our first species fowl that is spiking so far this season. So this bad boy is our Catacetum shunkii, and it is really, really, really close to being fully opened. I kind of didn't want to spoil the surprise, but at the same time, I cannot not share this with you guys. It is such a neat looking orchid. The blooms are progressing quite nicely and we do have a number of them so not quite what I was expecting as far as the blooms progression goes. They're opening kinda as they go. Really really weird. I don't know if that's normal or not but that is gonna be quite a spectacle here in just a few days I think. I think we're really 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 close. Our Tolumnia Jerak Flyer Magic is still in bloom. Really really nice looking plant. No branches, anything like that. I'm gonna cut this spike off here in the next few days I believe and try to get some strength back into this plant. All my Tolumnias right now for some reason are struggling. So hope it's not pest related. I really need to go through here and look at things, <laughs> take another gander at everything. Um, to my surprise, the Brassavola subulifolia still in bloom, all three still going strong, beautiful. They're still making everything smell really good at night. I cannot believe they've lasted this long. Uh, I can say the same thing about this lovely little orchid, the Sophronides manticurea. We're going on almost a month here, and that is awesome. For any kind of a Cattleya or Sophronides species, it is really, really awesome. I love that color. I am so happy it's been here for this long. The yellow bird is down to its last bloom, and this thing is fading quickly, quickly, quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if this is on the floor tomorrow or the next day. So that is all the blooming news, I think. Oh, no, I'm lying. Um, we'll get back to it. The little plant you see right here, this is my Tolumnia tetrapedula, and we have a spike on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll try to get in here. Yeah, there you go. So we have a spike just above my finger. Uh, we had two new growths this year. I'm waiting for the second spike to show. I hope it does, but one is better than none, so definitely going to be in flower here in the next few weeks to month or so. So our Dendrobium hemimelanoglossum, it's still doing well. The spikes are progressing quite nicely. I've got two of them. They are just starting to show the first signs of buds. So those are coming along quite nicely. The uh, plant next to it, Dyneema polybulbin, has opened up a third flower. So we've got the one down here, in addition to the two ones up a bit higher that we've looked at before. So this is coming into bloom again, lovely little plant, smells awesome, and packs quite a punch from afar. I mean, sorry, my, my humidity alarm went off. I have the door open to the greenhouse, and the ink bird started to tell me that it was not happy, so I had to turn the alarm off. Apologize, but anyway, that's Dyneema polybulbin. Three flowers open, and many, many more to come very, very soon. Bellina is still with us. Beautiful, beautiful flower. It is fading just ever so slightly, I can tell. And we are not getting any more growth in this spike, so this definitely is the last flower from this year, unfortunately. A um, couple new blooms. One of them is a new, but not new, new. It's our little Harriella odorata. It's doing great. It just opened up its final bud. I think this is going to be the last bloom for the year, so I will get a better picture of this for you guys, but I wanted to sneak through here. I am sneaking through all kinds of stuff. See this? <laughs> and show you guys, this did open up. But the star of our show, 
is down here. So this is my Oncidium Twinkle Pink Profusion. I am caught up in leaves. Hang on. <laughs> this is our Oncidium Twinkle Pink Profusion and it has finally opened up its first spike. These are beautiful little flowers. The scent is incredible. That's about as close as I can get to you. Get to them for you. So I hope you enjoy. Um, I was hoping for more spikes. I do have another spike here forming. So we have two spikes from this little plant this year, but we do have twinkle blooms. So that is very, very exciting. Had to share. So last but not least, we have our Pleurothallus Schweinfurthiana down here. And it was in spike, but I broke the spike. I think we're going to have more. I have a whole bunch of new growth here in this region that have popped up this year that should bloom, but I can tell you right now that the first chance we had is absolutely blown. And speaking of blown chances, um, luckily I think we still have some chance, but this is my Oh, my Miltonia Phymatocala spike, which last time we looked at was about up here and probably would be who the hell knows, but I broke it. <laughs> this is where it broke, clean break at one of the joints, but it does look like it is branching in a few of the nodes below, so we still have a chance to see the blooms, thankfully, but I totally blew it. We are not going to see how big this spike had a chance to get, so... I do desperately need to water guys so let me back out of here and I will sign out. It is absolutely dark outside. I hate this 5.30 and pitch black but it is what it is. So Alrighty so that's my video for today. Like I said lots and lots of things to come. Lots of progress and updates and whatnot. I hope uh, it wasn't too long and too droning on for you guys, but I do have a lot to talk about. I really just haven't had enough time, so plenty of stuff coming up on the horizon. I do have a few videos planned for this week. I should have some time to shoot them. Some maintenance type stuff, some tips and care type stuff, and then I do want to pull my dendrobiums out and have a nice look over those, because lots and lots of stuff is going on there as well. More and more future stuff to come, so anyhow. Thank you guys for joining. I do appreciate it. And until next time, happy growing. And please, please continue to stay safe. See ya.